Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Um, this episode, we're going to continue talking about compact camera system. Um, I already introduced you um, my tiniest Sony. Uh, yeah, I would call it tiniest because um, every Sony camera after this is actually bigger than this one. This is probably the most tiniest one that you can find on the market. Um, however, um, I was actually talking from the last episode about how to pair up with a 50 millimeter on um, Pentax um, with an adapter on this camera. Um, people might wondering why, because this is actually not the most compact solution. Um, with the adapter, it is still um, fairly large. Um, the reason I actually uh, recommend this combo uh, is actually due to the uh, the lens turbo, which is the focal reducer, um, will actually um, revert, I would say revert, um, the, the angle of view that you wanted to photograph. So um, it allows me to use 50 millimeter on this camera and remain on 50 millimeters. Um, that just because I am really um, used to using the 50 millimeters on the full frame um, that's back in the film days um, so i just keep the focal length and just keep using it although i did explore a couple of different type or different length of the focal length um, i still wanted to choose my favor would be between 35 to 50. Uh, today we're gonna go see a couple of different lenses I have, they're still pretty compact and they're allowed to use um, sorry, Sony series of cameras. Um, I will go through them and um, tell you the difference between uh, what kind of adapter you can use and uh, what would be the best situation for uh, choosing that particular lens and that particular um, lens adapter. Okay. So we already seen the Pentax on the, um, the lens turbo. Um, the next logical one is actually introduce you to uh, the Leica lenses because they are range finders and the range finders normally are much smaller than uh, the um, single lens reflector. Okay. First, let's take a look at um, we call Leica 39 millimeter uh, screw mount lenses. Um, actually, that's uh, a lot of people will agree this is probably the most famous age of Leica, and that's just because they create something ultra tiny and uh, still very usable for like the image quality for the lenses. Comparing um, the age difference, well, I have two Leicas in my hand. Um, the left is actually the screw mount, and the right is actually the end mount. Um, there's not much difference until uh, we'll talk about size wise. Um, the good thing about it is that Leica makes so uh, all the, um, the screw mount lens can be adapted to the end mount cameras. Um, without any uh, sacrifice for the functionalities. Um, the reason I like my screw mount lens is because they're pretty much just because of the way they build it, it's all metal. Uh, besides this uh, rim here, it's actually plastic. Everything else is metal and glass. Um, it's actually quite heavy in a way. Um, just a little tiny lens, but it's kind of heavy. They are definitely collectible. Um, the price don't go down, they might go up, depends on the condition. And it's actually very hard to find a really good condition one. This is my like my third or the fourth um, screw mount lens and I've actually found this one's the most presentable because um, others might be easily to be fogged or um, grow fungus inside of it just due to the age. Um, this is actually, a, let's see, it's a 1950s lens, and this guy's 1960s. Okay, that's, um, let's put on the camera with lens adapter. 
So you can do several ways, like I mentioned before. Um, the you could just adapt to the M mount, like a M mount, and then put on to um, the M mount uh, adapter into the Sony body, or you can just use um, like a screw mount 39. Well, I guess screw mount 39 everybody call it differently but as long as you you can see m39 or um, l39 to nex that's the right adapter it's a dummy adapter so it doesn't do anything it does not have um we call it uh, we call it coupling uh the coupling is that if you put distance with proper adapter to the m mount and you put an m mount body on it um it will actually um allow coupling so when you actually um, focusing you can see the viewfinder had um, a connection to it and, and basically knows exactly what focal length you're using how far you are and they can do the visual correction on uh, within the the viewfinder so as you can see you just screwing up on it it's not that hard it doesn't have anything that catch on it it's just basically like a screw uh, to the mount um, this is probably probably my most tiniest lens here on this camera body. As you can see, this is the entire length. It's very cute actually. Um, because it's old, um, especially this old, it's 1950s lens. Um, besides that, it's hard to find good condition. Um, back then they don't use um, they don't really use something like a computer to aid the design of lens so the accuracy is not as great uh, that means um, the sharpness of the lens is definitely not compared to any modern uh, Leica lenses or any other brand anyway um, however people always saying lens doesn't always have to be super sharp um, the interesting part about it is uh, the bouquet which is the out of focus area and also the color rendering. The color um, um, on this particular lens, I actually like it a lot, that's why I purchased this lens, even though it's not cheapest. Um, this particular lens is a 35 millimeter 3.5. Um, it runs about, uh, the back copy to good copy, it could be like um, about 250 to 400 or 500 dollars. Um, I got this one for 300. And the, I really like it, how it renders the color because the color, uh, it does look a little muted, not as contrasty. Um, it looks really soft in the color. And of course, I mentioned before, the sharpness is definitely not the strength of this type of lens, but it's actually the most entry level of Leica lens you could get just because of the price is cheaper and because it's old. Um, but it was particularly good for uh, the bouquet because bouquet will um, show something like a radiant uh, shape or what we call it cat eyed, uh, cat eyes um, shape. Um, some people like it, some people don't. It, it looks more real, more 3D to me. Um, it, it gives some sort of depth because the different kind of bouquet um, the Leica uh, bigger brother, older ones, the M mount. This is actually, a, um, we call it lapsable. You actually can pour it out first and then you try to make it so it stays pour out and then that's the actual lens. Um, the, the problem is if you mount it to the, the film, lens, film cameras and sometimes when people use it, they forgot to pour it out. So that you need to be worried about it. Second thing is about um, when you collapse down. Uh, I my lens does not collapse fully. You can see there's a gap between that. It's a black color. Um, the reason to is because uh, I went to the hardware store, um, purchased one of those uh, O-ring that people use for um, fixing their water pipes. Um, it gives a little buffer. So when you push down really hard, it doesn't collapse right into your camera and as you can see when you collapse there's the the lens extended in the back um, so um, 
the reason I have to use the O-ring to become a buffer is because um, some sensors or camera sensors will be actually right against that, uh, that barrel right there. Um, so the problem is that um, uh, if you mount this lens to a camera called Leica CL, you will actually hit uh, the light meter right behind it. That's why people suggest not to collapse all the way or collapse slowly. Um, my solution is basically just put an O-ring in there and it works perfectly. If you look, uh, after you put on this adapter from Leica M to Sony, you can see it doesn't extend too much. It's only just a little tiny bit uh, that's behind the uh, adapter. So it doesn't hurt anything. Um, it's far from my sensor at least, so it's safer. But this lens I like so much is because it collapsed. And once you put onto this tiny little camera body, it's very tiny. <laughs> So I actually went on to photo shoot with um, this particular lens um, annually in University of Washington. There is a, a cherry blossom season. Uh, everybody in the town shows up there. Um, actually, when I pull out this camera, uh, the very first thing was, I guess, uh, that's not been stereotyping here. Um, I believe Japanese people really, really love camera stuff. This Japanese dad came up to me, asked how I mount my camera because I obviously I think he saw the Leica lens here. Uh, <laughs> but that's just kind of interesting twist. Um, it, everybody appreciated the look. Uh, it looks really nice and everything. And the color render of this lens is definitely a little more modern than the um, the screw mount here. So. Um, um, although this is 1960s lens, um, the coating was actually much better. Um, it, it controls flares quite well. The only downside is that it's still not a super modern lens. So the sharpeners uh, might not be as expected compared to uh, much modern lenses. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, this lens would run about normally from 350 to uh, I don't know six seven hundred I've seen some more expensive ones um, it's quite heavy substantial way as well um, okay now we're coming to um, the much later version of the end this is the I don't know if I can pronounce it right uh, void lender maybe <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm not German. Uh, it's a German company-ish, if I don't, if I remember correctly from the internet. Um, they actually got acquired by Japanese uh, company called uh, Cosina. Um, basically, they're Japanese made nowadays. Um, they're a little more plastic on it, like um, this particular piece here, which is your uh, aperture, aperture ring, it's plastic. Um, this particular lens is called, um, it's 35 millimeter f2.5, um, it's called Pancake 2. So it's one of the Pancake series of lens that they, they designed. Uh, it's really, really compact. Um, although it, you know, the lens actually expanded a little bit in the, in the rear, but if you compare to any lenses earlier, it's very compact. Um, I'm holding up against it, the Leica, but then I'm showing you that uh, after mounting it, uh, so just disregard the length of the lens cap in the back. You can see is uh, my 50 millimeter is still longer than this guy. Okay, well, the argument is that my lens uh, of the Leica is not fully uh, collapsed, but uh, that's fine. Um, I can show you why I like this lens so much, is that this is my first M lens. Um, although it's newer, it's really modern, um, it's Japanese made, but the price comes in was actually really affordable. Um, so I would suggest that if you couldn't afford the brand new Leica lenses, 
and uh, you don't want to go for something super old like 1950s or 1960s Leica. Um, this particular brand, uh, the Voilander, is actually one of the uh, top choice I would say. It's um, bang for the buck. Um, and they are compact, they're well built. And um, let's put on the camera right here. Um, this particular lens actually come with a lens hood. I did not put on it just to show how compact this guy can be. Um, this is the total length with adapter. Um, it's actually 2.5 and I found that uh, this lens is good for uh, street photography. Um, this lens actually you can see as adapter have 2.5 to 2.8. Uh, they are really close, just one click. Actually it's half click. And then another half click will be 3.5 and then f4. Um, the 2.5 it's actually not too shabby. They, uh, their image quality was definitely sharp. Um, Although people would say it's a rangefinder lens uh, on the modern um, sensor, it will be hard for uh, corner to corner performance, and that is actually true. This lens is extremely sharp, but uh, if you wanted to have better corner, you have to get down to f4. The next one up, it's 1970s uh, Leica. Although there's a history background where 1970s Leica. Um, they actually work with Japanese manufacturer Minota and this particular lens although it says Minota but according to the source sorry for the noise uh, according to the source this is definitely the Leica design uh, 40 millimeter um, summer chrome um, so uh, by far this is my um, collections in Leica. Um, I haven't had anything newer than this guy. I have tried some newer versions. Um, they're good but not compared to the image quality is not that much further from this particular lens. Um, but this lens is way cheaper. So I guess the story goes where um, Minota and, and Leica try to produce a particular line of camera lens. They call it Leica CL and later Minota just took over and called it CLE with a more advanced version. Um, the CLE version with the CL version, the only difference is probably redesigned for some tiny element, just tweaks and then uh, give, Minota gives a better uh, coding. Um, that's actually the reason why I bought this one as Minota version, not the Leica version, because um, optical design they are identical. But people always rumor saying that um, uh, early Leica does not have proper, uh, does not have the best coding uh, technology. Um, Minota does have a little edge for coding. Um, the lens coding on this guy to me, it's definitely paired up. Um, I cannot tell a difference between this guy with uh, older um, name brand back then on the 1970s where they were pr promoting multi uh, coding technique, uh, such as like Pentax SMC, something like that. Um, I can take this lens and basically shooting against the sun. Um, it was okay. And um, the color comes out really, really bold. Um, and sharpness is perfect. Um, that's why I would choose this guy if I have the budget. The Leica Brother version, it goes from 400 to six, seven hundred dollars Identical lens, but only Minota version. Um, the, the price range will be 300 to 500 I got this one on 399 and it's perfect condition. I absolutely love it. Okay, um, if you like this video, please subscribe um, or just click like, it would be cool. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.